think they can. Uh, look, we've often seen uh, where the clock has hit double zero and play continues until the completion of, of whatever's happening. So the ball's in play until there's a tackle. So the referee here called the, with the short whistle. But the short whistle was to indicate to the tackle player, do not play the ball now, that's it, the game. And before he went to, which was the stoppage in play, before he then went to the full-time whistle, he actually sat there and said, OK, and he had Chad Townsend come in and say, we want to now put in a captain's challenge. So that is basically similar but different, if that makes sense, mm. to what happens when the ball's in play and the ball hits double zero. It doesn't... If you're running the ball and it hits double zero, they do not call full-time bad luck. They let you get tackled, complete the play. Mm. Spare me with the semantics of the short whistle and all the other waffle that yeah. we heard out of headquarters today, right? The most important thing that came out of Graham Annesley's mouth is that Ashley Klein got it wrong in terms of the escort penalty mm. and the Tigers should have won the game. So... For a club that is routinely dragged through the mud, kicked in the guts, a lot of time because of their own doing and their own mistakes, for them to be robbed of two competition points against a heavyweight like the Cowboys, pick whatever adjective you want, joke, farce, shambles, you can understand why Tigers members and fans well, today the feel as though they've been kicked in the gut. Uh, I get the emotional. And they need to... They, they've been kicked in, and they, so they need to be proactive and yeah. show that they've yeah. they've got a bit of fight about them because, you know, the officials have been hammered from pillar to post the last couple of seasons, so I get why they're doing it. I don't really like it. I'm with Kenty. I, I don't think there's a place to challenge these sorts of decisions in, in a court of law. In 2014, the Dragons um, tried this on. Actually, they put a complaint to the NRL where they wanted to get mm. two points back because Melbourne scored a try after the siren had went. Uh, right. in, in a Monday night game a few years ago, the NRL laughed him away. It was Todd Greenberg, mm -hmm. different yeah. leadership, but he laughed him all the way back. We heard from Graham Ennisley today. Take a listen. The question that arose yesterday was, uh, what, was a challenge allowable in those circumstances? And in our view, uh, it was allowable in those circumstances. The referee has to stop, blow his whistle to stop the game because time has expired. That opens up the opportunity for a challenge to be mounted on uh, that particular play back to, as it says, the previous play of the ball, or in this case, the, the kickoff. We're just not satisfied that there was enough in that incident to warrant the decision of the bunker to award a penalty kick. I'm the first to acknowledge that we believe that they got the decision wrong yesterday. I was hoping that the challenge was going to be unsuccessful, because I didn't think there was enough in that contact, yeah, I mean, it, it looked a bit spectacular because they kind of both, once they made contact, they both went their separate ways. Uh, but I didn't think there was enough in the lead up to that uh, to warrant the uh, penalty kicks. So. Labelled a joke, farce and robbed. Uh, the worst call of the year, in my opinion, possibly the last couple of years. It was, it was horrible. I just thought they got it so wrong. I thought they got it so wrong. Let's, let's get right into this, Kenty, because we've, we've kind yeah, of... Yeah, I'm not as strong as you. You're I not actually, as strong as me. No, I, I actually... I think the referee or the client, you could argue he got it right. <laughs> yeah. Graham, Graham honestly yeah. couldn't Graham even argue that he got it right. You're in fairyland, mate. In what instance, but Kenty? How, how can Explain you Explain that to us. It, just because, let's, let's, because let's listen because to this. The, Chris uh, Butler says before kickoff, no escorts. He makes it very clear. No escorts. And you look at Kapoa down the bottom here in number four. That's, this is the trajectory of the ball where it goes up and where it lands, where it's caught, OK? That's the ball. Now, look at the line felt runs. Look at the line Kapoa runs where he runs and then he accelerates into... In, at no point is he running towards the ball. At Ken, no Ken, point... Ken, he, Ken, he, is, Ken, he is clear in, your, in front he, of Kapoa. That's not how it unfolds. He's got his eyes on the ball, Kapoa, so he's watching the ball. Okay, the ball goes into there. Kapoa's he's watching. What, no, he's watching the ball. Yep. He's watching the ball. He's yep. not going to... You don't know exactly where the ball's going to land as soon as it's kicked. Then he changes his angle to go towards the ball. Felt runs into him on purpose and dives to the left-hand side, and he was no chance of getting anywhere near it in the first place. That's and melting it's a shocking call. Cool. Capola's role there is just in case Dan Laurie knocks the ball, or, or to protect the, the bouncing ball to stop someone else from getting it and racing away and scoring. His name, aim is not to catch the ball. Capola. He's there just in case, yeah. He's not allowed to touch felt. He's not touch felt. Touch felt touches him. This defence has got a bit of check and release about it. <laughs> I don't like this defence. <laughs> well, you can say what you like. <laughs> the fact, the fact like is, you watch it in real time. Capola accelerates to get in front of felt. He accelerates to get in front of felt. 
Felt okay. changes his line to deliberately Does he? Where's, 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 where's he changed his line? Where's he changed his line? He's angled towards the ball. Look who changes their line. Look, look, yeah, follow the the can we play it in real time rather than Kapal was it? That's front the blue of jersey Kapal. and the orange jersey. Who changes their line there? Tell me. But they're both headed towards the same direction he's as the ball. The he's looking. His eyes only oh, for the footy. On. His you eyes only for go. the footy. You don't right. just run to where the ball's going to land. You have he's, to yeah. keep your eyes on the ball and change your direction of your run and your arc, which is what Kapara is doing. It's that's a bad call. No, it's and he's filled, the, he's filled the gap where there's no other West Tigers play. He's not going to run straight into his own players. Can we? Hang on, so the NRL's admitted they've got it wrong yeah. and that it shouldn't have been a penalty, but you're going to go the other way. I'm saying I think I think Kapoa knew what he was doing. I think Kapoa knew he was running an escort. He did it anyway. And I, I, I don't like but the even rule. If he knew I, what he was I, doing. Hey, listen, I do not like the rule. I do not like the decision. But even if he knew what he was doing, he did it the right way. Players do it every week. Not allowed to do it, though, Brad. But, but he didn't... He's, he's allowed to do it if he's looking at the ball and running towards the ball, which he, he didn't run towards it, the he ball. ran towards the ball. No, he didn't. The last oh bit of contact. He ran to get in front of Felt. <laughs> oh Kyle Felt God. is the last bit of... He initiates the contact. There's no doubt Felt makes it. There's no doubt Felt milks it. No doubt. But he initiates the contact. He's the, the biggest milker in the game. He, I, think he, I think he picked out a tiger... To, to do it. I think he, he wanted to get knocked over because oh, the kick was too, yeah, too one, deep. Once okay? he realised he's but not in But the fact is, Kapoa also erred. I think he went in there as an escort rather than actually going for the ball, and he erred. So if you're actually climbing the bunker, you're, you're pushing penalty. You're, you're well, sending penalty down. Right, if it comes back to what we always argue about, is it black and white interpretation or is it discretion? Because it's discretionary penalty, it's, it's not a penalty. Black and white interpretation of the rule, it's a penalty. Which one do we want? But it's, we it's, always it's, want the one that suits black us. And white. I, I, it's not yeah. black and white at all. He is, he runs into him. You're, you're probably the only white. person I spoke to today who thinks that, oh, that well, that's a penalty. Oh, well, that might be the case. That means it's not black and white. <laughs> well, that, no, Annesley, Annesley didn't argue that it that yeah, didn't Annesley was, it. was on he, life support. He, he was Annesley just trying Annesley to save his own life. Annesley Annesley he was in desperate need to try and... The contact was not sufficient for both players to fall down. They were both looking at milk penalties. That's what Annesley argued. It's arguably the worst decision in, in a, a very long time that's cost a side that's worked so hard to score two tries in the last five minutes to win a game they should have won. Thomas it could be. Game. Yeah, that's what we, we heard. Peachy. That, we heard that. Peachy said on the audio. Yeah. 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 The Tigers will get that <laughs> when they finally get the audio out of headquarters. Well, I, but, like, Paul, seriously, the Tigers, serious, they're fighting James. to avoid the wooden spoon. <laughs> they're currently ranked 16th. Which is irrelevant. Which no, is no, irrelevant. No, no, but the ramifications of what this loss now means for them. They don't get the two points. Of course they wouldn't be last if they got the two points. I get that. That's huge in terms of the bigger that, picture and it should of have, their organisation. And it should have no bearing on the decision no, that gets No, I'm made. not talking about that. But the Tigers are entitled today to feel absolutely dudded no as doubt. a result of what I'm No doubt. About. And I feel for the Tigers. I really do. I thought it, that they were gutted. But you still want to award the penalty. No, I, You're I, the only I, one in Australia. I, I'm not the only one in Australia. I'm just saying... It actually if, climbs the other is one. Is it the only game this year where the game's been over and... Because... We've seen a lot of games this year where as soon as the siren goes or as soon as time is over, the referee says it's over and you can't even play a ball, you can't move a centimetre. But in this game, in this game, the referee stopped. He walked around for 10 seconds, 15 seconds and went back to Townsend. Well, Annesley explained that what was happening in that period, that period where the referee walked away and told the players to leave him alone, what was happening there was because Chad Townsend comes in immediately and says, escort, we want a challenge. The referee says, leave me alone, walks away, and we've been let... And this is what's going to be interesting, what the Tigers are going to be the big one. We're led to believe that what was happening was that the bunker was telling Butler that they had a challenge up their sleeve. Mm. Because sometimes in the 80 minutes, the referee can forget whether they've used yeah. it up or not. Yes. So the referee was being told they had one up their sleeve. Now, if the audio comes through and it says something like, mate, we might need to check this here stall... And that's not where I think the I'm Tigers are heading. That. I think that's what Lee Hatchman Tellus was alluding to. If there's some sort of tip there mm. from the bunker, which we know happens, then the NRL yeah. could be in some well, trouble. Can we, can we address this? Sure. No escorts, Tigers. Listen, listen to this. When you're ready. I think we just missed him saying no escorts. So, so here they are. Now listen to this. Chad Townsend. So there's, the, there's the short whistle. Uh, yep. And they're out of time. What'd you say? Game over. It's just three, so Jimmy Tamar saying Wait. game over. What are you? I can't hear. You can hear. Stop. What do you say? What are you challenging? Challenging escort. Okay. okay. They do. They retained it. They retained it. We have a challenge. 
All right, so we don't know what's been said. But this there. short whistle, right, like in your career, I, we've all been watching rugby league our entire lives. Never heard of it. I, I've never come across this short whistle. And yes, he does certainly blow it, and the NRL's clearly been definitive about yeah. it. But I'd never heard of it. But you understand what they're trying to say. They're trying to explain the reason behind the game not finishing. So, like, it's crazy. I've never heard of a short whistle in all, all this time covering the game, but. When, you, when they explain it to you, you understand what they're saying. It means the game has not finished yet because they haven't gone that multiple whistles to, to end the game. Endersley did make a good point that if the decision was right and he had run him off the ball mm. and they'd stopped the game at that point to get the right result, then no one would be carrying on the way that we all are yeah. today, which is a fair point, but it was so horribly wrong that you can't... You can't compare. You cannot compare. There's not a well, person on planet apart from Paul Kent who thought they got it right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> But even the ramification this this could have on the top eight and top four, you know, I don't think a lot of people have, have had a look at that. Well, it'll just, four. I don't think they'll have a well, ramification the, 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 the Cowboys are second, Cowboys will be there. right? Mm. So if they get a home final, does that mean that they can potentially, if they win week one, they're going to host another home final down if the track a second, they will. as well? That's massive. It's huge. In yeah. terms of and if we're talking eight. ramifications, if somehow the Tigers do win, this case, and I don't think they will. I don't think no. they're going to walk away with two competition points. But if they did, imagine the ramifications it could have for the game long term.